Hey guys, this is Meadows. Today I will show you how to paint Tyranid Carnifex, but of course you can use this method to paint any other miniature you want. If you want to learn how to make such a nice swamp base, you can check my other tutorials. I'll be painting skin and carapace with Kalian Flesh Tone. We'll be doing shadows with Carbor Crimson, another shadow with Ruchi Violet, and highlights with Screaming Skull. I'll be doing also edge highlighting with Screaming Skull later. For weapons, I will use Evil Sun Scarlet and Flash Gets Yellow. And I will later finish everything with um, coat of varnish and blood for the blood god for teeth. And as you can see, this is how miniature will look like after we're finished. So I'll start with Galleon Flesh Tone and my airbrush. The PSI is set to 45, I think. It's diluted more or less to a consistency of a wash. As you can see, I'm always airbrushing at an angle, uh, this time from top to bottom. Uh, it's actually called zenithal highlighting. It's like, it's like highlighting the way the sun would hit the miniature. So I'm basically from above. Pretty much the same with the chest. I'm doing it from front to the back. So as you can see, the black shadow still remain between the ribs. I'm also highlighting the edges of the carapias and the chimneys. As you can see, I have highlighted the whole miniature. It's something like highlight base coat, base color. As I said, I basically paint the whole skin, but I leave some shadows unpainted. I'll be doing now first shade with Carbo Crimson. Uh, it's a pure wash with an airbrush. And as you can see, I'm applying it from the bottom this time. I do that to not to cover the highlights too much. You basically want to work in the shadows. By the way, I've got a joke for you. Why a bicycle can't stand on its own? Because it's too tired. So yeah, I'm basically shading the chest now. Uh, as you can see, I'm doing it in the opposite direction to the highlights um, from back to front this time. I'm also shading Carapius. And basically everything else.
this step doesn't require so much precision. If you paint over the highlight, you can always redo the highlight in the next step when we'll be uh, painting Screaming School with airbrush. So I finished shading uh, miniature with Carbo Crimson. Uh, as you can see, I am kind of changing the lighting. So the colors doesn't look as good as they should, but they will in the end on the last pictures. Uh, so I'm doing now the final shade with Duchi Violet. Again, uh, straight from the cap to my airbrush. And I'm doing the deepest shadows now. I explain this in every tutorial and I will probably will in every next tutorial. I'm painting like that, uh, like moving my finger all the time, so I can spray a little bit of paint and then I dry it with my with an air and repeat that process. If you spray pure wash for a half a second too long, it will make a splatter effect. So basically, just spray a little bit of paint and dry it with air, then spray it again. So yeah, I continued to do the shadows and did it for all the miniature. And now I'm doing highlights with Screaming School. I never count parts while uh, mixing my paint with water, I just pour some water into a cup, then some paint, I check it on the miniature, if it makes a spider effect or a splatter, I add more paint until uh, the right consistency. I prefer to paint with as thin paints as possible, as long as they don't make any splatter. This is probably the more precise step because if you cover your previous shadows and mid-tones then you basically destroy the whole work you did before so you have to be very careful at applying this highlight. Always remember the rule, the less is more.
I hardly ever use any masking tape or any other masking equipment. I just basically look for an angle that I can spray on the part without sp over spraying another part. Like 95% of the time you can find this angle and freely spray the part you want. Okay, so I'll be now doing weapons and Evil Sun Scarlet and Airbrush. I used to use corn red, then evil scan scarlet, then orange and then yellow, but I learned to just blend from black to red to yellow, it's much quicker. You have to be more precise, but it's much much quicker this way. I'll be doing weapons, uh, talons, hooves those little spikes on hands and legs and a tail. And now uh, highlight with large kids yellow and airbrush again. Uh, I'm doing now edge highlights with same yellow. It's a little tint with water. I sometimes do highlights with a paint straight from the cap, but if you water it down a little bit, it's much faster. And after all the highlights were done, I wash weapons with Carbo Crimson. You want to start at the brightest point and pull the paint into the darkest. Like that. I'll be doing now edge highlighting for the almost all miniature. Uh, I'll be doing all the plates on the carapius, on the legs, um, and highlighting some other parts like I guess it's an ankle or something uh, on the ne on the leg, um, soft tissue around the soft tissue to highlights on um, the face. Um, some edges on the hands basically everywhere where I think it should be this is a very long step so I won't show you all of it uh, you can see clearly the Edge highlighting on the final pictures. I'll show you how to paint the eyes. It's again evil sun scarlet, just a little dot. Then yellow. Just a smaller highlight and then white. And I think it's enough.
So you can see now the colors are very dull and boring and colorless and it will be fixed with varnish. I mix it with like, I don't know, three parts water, one part, one part, one part varnish or four parts water. It doesn't really matter, you just want to make it thin and when it dries you can apply a second coat and a third coat. It's basically always better to apply a thinner coat and then we do them than a one thick coat that will basically ruin the miniature. As you can see colors are starting to pop out already but you will clearly see them uh, after I adjust the lighting for a proper one. After varnish is applied I also do the blood on the teeth. And I do it with Blood for the Blood God. It doesn't look great on the these two spikes on the moth at the moment, but when it dries it will be much more subtle. And that's it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please share and subscribe. For more tutorials and miniatures, you can check our YouTube channel and Facebook page. As always, feel free to leave any comment or questions, and if you want some awesome painted miniatures, you can always order them from us. For more information, you can go to our temporary webpage at meadowsarts.com or contact us via Facebook or email, which you can find in the description. So that's it for today. See you next time.